So I'm testing out the rest of the functionality on my board. Now if you're wondering about the little fix here, which I think you can see, uh, go watch the previous video where I did a ninja repair on my LED so it actually works and you can see it's working here. We've got a nice blue LED showing that we're connected over BLE to this nice website I've made. So in this video we're testing out the accelerometer and the gyroscope. So I'm using the LSM 6DS3 on this board and um, it's right here on the board and as you can hopefully see it's working perfectly. Now as always the boards came from PCBWay and they've done a great job. So apart from my screw up with the LED everything seems to be working so far. So check out a link to PCBWay in the description. The boards have come out really nicely. So you can see all this lovely silk screen and uh, you can see it in the 3D view as well. It's pretty cool. So um, obviously this is using the accelerometer. So I've got three different modes. So we're currently in accelerometer mode. Now this does work quite well. We can detect, um, I think this is pitch or is it roll? It's one of those, this must be roll. And then we have pitch, so we can flip the board up and down. But there are some limits on this. So what we can't detect is your. So if I rotate the board around the Z axis, we don't get any results. Now this is because Z is pointing upwards and the X is pointing that way and the Y is pointing that way. So there's no change in the accelerometer when I rotate the board and it doesn't really do anything. And when we flip the board up like this, things do get slightly confused. So because now Z is almost zero, you can't really tell what the orientation of the board is. Now if we rotate the board, we do get very interesting effects. So obviously also not quite what we'd like. So not ideal if you just use the accelerometer. So what you can do is you can switch over to using the gyroscope. So I'll just reset that to zero. So with gyroscope, what you get is the change in angle around the, um, the axis. So it's the rate of change of angle. So now we can spin the board around and our 3D model updates nicely. And you can see here we have the real-time gyro numbers coming in and we've got the integrated value. So I'm doing the integration in the actual web page here. So as we rotate around, we get nice updates and it looks very sensible. We can flip the board up and we can rotate it like that as well. So that's pretty cool as well. But the problem is if I put the board back down flat again, you will see that um, we've gradually introduced quite a few errors. So that's not ideal really. So if we reset the gyro, we can get back to how we were. But um, again, if we rotate around, eventually it will slowly get out of, out of whack. So it's still fairly accurate there, but spin a bit more. And you can see it's really, really gone a bit wonky. So the third mode is this fusion mode. So I'm using a, um, a little library from these guys. It's based on the PhD of Magwick. So if you want to learn about this, I'll put a link in the description. You can go off to this guy's thesis and read all about how this works. Now, ideally, we would have a magnetometer sensor as well, but I've only got a gyro and accelerometer. So I'll just reset the board to get everything back to a known state. Or I'll reconnect and I'll switch into fusion mode. So you can now see we're starting off pretty flat. So I can spin the board around as you'd expect. And that works well if we go back, still flat. Flip the board up, spin it around. And we don't get that much error creeping in. It goes back to pretty much where it was before. So this is combining the accelerometer and the gyroscope measurements. Um, you can see in this graph here that it's feeding us through the various rotations. Here's the gyroscope and the accelerometer graphs. So, so that works pretty well. So it goes back and it's completely flat again. If we go back to the gyroscope, you'll see as we move around, it very quickly introduces errors. So it's already gone slightly out of whack. So this fusion thing does work pretty well. Um, it still has some errors, so it's pretty flat there but eventually it will get out of sync. One thing I have noticed that's quite interesting is um, this temperature value here. It does seem very sensitive to temperature. So as the temperature increases as the board warms up, we do get some drift of the values, but the fusion stuff does actually work pretty well. So I've wiggled around with it quite a lot and it's still flat. So that's pretty good. Now I might put a magnetometer on the board because then you can get really accurate um, fusion values 
there's quite a few algorithms for this. So um, I think Adafruit has one as well. So I'll put a link to their instructions in the um, description as well. So it's pretty cool. So do you want to use this yourself? Well, this website is public. Um, you can actually load up any 3D model. So I'll show you how to get a 3D model. But first, let's just prove we can load up 3D models. So we'll um, go and find a teapot, which I have somewhere. So there you go. I've loaded a teapot model up. And now we can pour some tea and spin our teapot around and do all sorts of crazy stuff. So let me show you how to actually get one of these GLB files. So you could use this website yourself. Then I'll show you how to use the firmware. Um, and it should just work with this website. So let's do a bit of um, 3D modeling of our PCBs. So the first thing we'll need is the 3D model of our PCB. So in KiCad, you just go File, and then you go to Export, and you can export Step. And I've just noticed you can actually export a GLB directly. So you just go here, and that will give us a GLB file. So let's export that. I'll put it somewhere where I can find it. Um, somewhere easy. Let's just put it in my downloads folder. Okay, so that's the GLB file exported. So back on our website, choose our GLB. So that's the one I've just exported. And then we can load it up. So there's our PCB. Now I can see there's no silt screen, so let's get that fixed. So back to export. So GLB, export silt screen. Nice. So let's export that again. Okay, exported. Let's load it up. There we go. Nice silk screen. Not bad at all. Pretty cool. So turn on fusion. We can do all the rotations, all the magical stuff. It's a pretty nice, um, pretty nice thing to play with. So I'll quickly show you the firmware so you can edit this yourself as well. All of this is on GitHub. So the only thing you'll need to do is change these three values. So you need the SDA pin and the SCL pin, so the data and the clock pins for your, um, for your board. And then you need the address. So my board is on um, 6B hex. Uh, most boards will use 6A hex, so you may just change that. And then the only other things you need, I've got some battery charging and some indicator LEDs. So if you comment these out, then the code will carry on working. It just won't use them. So then you just run this firmware. And then on the website, you can have a connect over web serial. So if I plug in um, USB, so that's USB plugged in, then I can disconnect from BLE and I can connect over web serial. So hopefully that will show up. So there we go, just have the power cycle. So now I can connect over web serial as well. So that works quite nicely. Uh, all it's doing, if I um, open up the terminal here, then I um, just need to disconnect here. And then we can run the monitor command. And you can see we're just outputting a whole bunch of JSON. So it's pretty simple. We have the accelerometer measurements, the gyro measurements, the temperature, and the Euler values are the values coming out of the fusion algorithm. So it should be pretty easy to run this on your own boards if you have a board with uh, the right um, module on, so the LSM 6DS3, then um, it should work for you as well. Give it a go. Let me know how it works out. It's all on GitHub, so if you pop over to GitHub, then feel free to uh, raise PRs, uh, fix any bugs. If you want to support your own hardware, then go ahead and do it yourself. That's why it's open source. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.